that even mean, Bowers Game? Why there, YouTube? I'm back again today for another how to play video, and today I'm excited to teach you to play Kismet. This is for one or more players, ages seven plus. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure that everyone has their own unique score sheet. I've got a two-player game set up right now. Then each player is going to roll a die, and the person who rolls highest is going to be the first player. If you have a tie, roll off until someone has the highest score by themselves. So on a turn, players are going to roll up to three times. They're going to fill in one of the boxes on their score sheet, and then they're going to pass the dice to the player on the left. You're going to continue to do this until everyone has a number in each one of these 15 spots on your score sheet. So let's show you how a turn works. First thing you're going to do is you're going to roll all five of the dice. You're going to take a look at the dice and you're going to see what you're close to potentially completing in the basic and kismet section. The basic section means you're just trying to get as many numbers of a certain type as you can. So for fives, you'd be trying to get as many fives as you can. For sixes, sixes. For twos, twos, you get it. And for this section, you just get as many points as there are of that number. So let's say that this was my final roll and I decided to score my threes. I would get six points right here in the threes because I had two threes. Now that would be a terrible decision because in this game you get up to three rolls. So that was my first roll. I can pick up as many of my dice as I'd like to and re-roll them again and that would be my second roll. And then once again, I look at what I have and I can either score if I'd like or I could roll them one final third time and then score. So let's mark out the six, because that wouldn't be a wise decision. Let's take a look at these dice, and let's actually play out this turn. So I notice that I have a three, four, five, which means I do have the potential for a straight, because moving from the basic section on the top, let's go down to the kismet section on the bottom. These are slightly more difficult challenges that you're going to try and achieve. So this one is two pair of the same color, three of a kind, which we would almost have, since we do have two threes. A straight, which is either one, two, three, four, five, or two, three, four, five, six. And as you can see, this is all very clearly labeled on your score sheet, very user friendly. A flush, which means all of the same color. A full house, which means three of a kind of a number, and then two of a kind of a number. And while yes, those technically could be the same number if you wanted them to be, so like two twos here and three twos there, you would never do that though because you just get a kismet, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Next, there's a full house, same color, and for that to work, you need all of the dice to be the same color. So if you had three green threes and then two red fives, that would not be a full house, same color. That would just be a regular full house. You can get four of a kind. You can get Yarborough, which means you just add up the numbers on your dice, and that's just what you score. Or you could get a Kismet, which means you get all five dice having the same number on them. This is the biggest amount of points you can score. Now, unlike the top and the basic action, where you would only score points for the numbers you have, so for instance, this would be six points right here, on the bottom, in many instances, you're going to total all your dice, plus you're going to get bonus points. So for two pair and a three of a kind, you just total all your dice and you get those points. For straights and flush, you get a fixed amount of points at 30 and 35 points, but for the full house, the four of a kind, the kismet, you're going to total all your dice and then you get bonus points. So don't forget to add those in your score spot. So I think this player would probably try and go for a straight. So they might hold on to the three, four, five. They'd roll these two dice. And now their situation has drastically changed because they have three, four, five, three, four. And they might say, all right, well, that's two pair. So I automatically have two pair, same color. And if we were to score, it wouldn't matter that this is a red because our two pair are all the same color. However, I have one more roll. So let's see if we can get another three or four. And we did, which means we have actually just completed the full house or the full house, same color. So we'll do the full house same color because it's obviously more difficult. And if you happen to get another full house same color later, you can just use it as a regular full house. Because once you put a number on your score sheet, that category is no longer open to you. So let's just say that I marked in my points for my full house same color. And I would get 4, 8, 12, 15, 18 points plus 20. So I would put a 38 right here next to the full house same color. However, I cannot get another full house same color at all this game. Once you put it in there, it's in there. Which means later on in the game, you might come into a situation where you've rolled your dice three times and you still can't fill in any of these. If that happens, you just have to put a zero in one of them and then pass your dice to your left, your turn is over. Now there's one more major rule that I need to talk about before we get into the scoring, and that's what happens if you get a kismet twice. So a kismet's when you get five of a kind, you get a whole bunch of points, 
And if you happen to do it twice in one game, that's very special. So let's just pretend we did. We rolled a second Kismet. We already got one in our score box here. Now, you can't score another Kismet and get another huge chunk of points. However, what you can do, is you can look at your Kismet and see if you can score in some other way. So right now, I would also have four of a kind. I would have two pairs same color. I would have fours. I could make this my Yarsborough. But whatever you do, you're going to score as many points as you would score normally for that. So let's just pretend I put this in my Yarsborough down here. So I'd get 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. But what makes this extra special, since it's my second kismet, is that everyone else at the table is now going to write a zero in whatever their top box on the score sheet is. Once they've done that, everybody loses a turn and it goes right back to the player who scored the second kismet. Quite a game changer. Also, if you happen to score more kismets in the same game, it works the same way and you need to stop cheating. And remember, every turn you must fill in a number on your score sheet, even if it's a zero, because the game will end once everyone has filled in their score sheet, and then we can get to the scoring. And scoring is really quite simple for the bottom section. However, the top section has a trick up its sleeve. Because on the top section, you can get bonuses. If you score 63 to 70, you're going to get an additional bonus 35 points. If you score 71 to 77, you'll score an additional 55 points. And if you score 78 and over, you'll score an additional 75 bonus points. This is a huge chunk of points. Because you get those points in addition to whatever all your tallied up points are in the basic section. So everyone's going to tally up their total for the basic section, see if they get the bonus, and then put their basic section total right there. Then you go down to the Kesmet section, you're going to add up all the scores in the Kesmet section, place it right here, and then you're going to go back up to your basic section total, put that number in there, add these two numbers up on the bottom, get your game total, and whoever has the most points is the winner of Kismet. Now, if you happen to run into a tie, they didn't cover it in the rules because they just didn't have the space to fill it in. But that's kismet. If this helped you out, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Also, let me know in the comments where I helped you out. I always feel like that's kind of cool to know. And if you're enjoying the content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below or support the Patreon as I teach new games all the time. But go have some fun, and thanks for your time, YouTube. This video is brought to you by all of my amazing Patreon supporters, and I would love it if you would join their ranks and have your name immortalized in the end of many of my videos for the end of time. But consider for only a dollar a month. And as always, thanks for stopping by.